Bash has five rebounds. It has truly been a half-court game, John. Well, both teams getting back defensively, so there aren't many easy looks in the early offense. Nash, rebound by Carroll. Here comes Graves at the other end. That's a good find. Terrific catch. On the shot, Graves simply took off. Good steal. And Thomas got it. Off to Carroll, 15-footer. And Notre Dame has their biggest lead tonight. Good start by the Fighting Irish. The Irish, 41 to 35. Halftime in St. Louis and Sacramento. Tight games in Greenville and Albuquerque. Clark Kellogg and I will bring you all the action coming right up. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our studios here in New York for Singular at the Half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. There are so many tight games going on right oh. now. Let's get to them. First of all, in St. Louis, Holy Cross leading the Kansas Jayhawks by 2, 37-35. Earlier in this game, Kansas was dominating underneath. They really were, but you take a look at the numbers and offensive rebounds in favor of Holy Cross and then the turnovers, Kansas with four, Holy Cross, Kansas with seven, Holy Cross only with four. Heinrich to Gooden for the alley-oop right there. And then Kansas' is Aaron Miles going to step in the passing lane, take it away. He's going to score and get foul. Kansas was up five. And then Holy Cross's Ryan Valley, a rare four-point play. He converted it. The Crusaders lead by one. Jeff Boshi, top of the key, will hit that three. The Jayhawks had a one-point lead, but at the break right now, Holy Cross, 16th seed in the Midwest, leads Kansas by a score of 37-35. Our other game at the break, UNC Wilmington with a 37-28 lead, and the Trojans must be wondering what's going on. I'm sure they are because they've been out-rebounded. You take a look, Brett Blizzard, he's not by himself, though. He leads them with seven. David Bluthenthal, we talked about him earlier, how he needs to play well, only three of eight from the floor. UNC Wilmington's Ed Williams will get the layup and the foul on the fast break. The free throw gave the Seahawks an early three-point lead. But then Jerry Dupree in transition finds Sam Clancy for an easy one. It was back and forth early on. Ed Williams going to find, gets the pass down low, and he's throwing it down with authority. And the number 13 seed in the South, UNC Wilmington with a 37-28 lead. Games in action right now. First round in the South in Greenville. 18 minutes to play in the second half. Notre Dame with a 41-35 lead on the 49ers of Charlotte. Let's take you there live and join Kevin Harlan and John Sunvold. The ninth-seeded Charlotte 49ers, eighth-seeded Finding Irish of Notre Dame. We were tied at halftime. We've had six ties in the game, but Notre Dame has come out on fire here in the second half. Shot clock at 10. Curtis Nash wiggling inside and a foul. Again, the value of Nash is the ability at 6-6 to put it on the floor and create. Notre Dame out of the Big East and Charlotte out of Conference USA. Two evenly matched teams, both in the tournament a season ago. And John, both like to do things outside if they can. But we have not seen all that much of that from Charlotte. Notre Dame, on the other hand, is at six three-point shots in this game. Well, both uh, teams like to push. They like to find uh, openings for their good shooters, because both teams have it. But I think the key so far in this ball game, defensively, both teams have gotten back, and they've gotten set defensively and made it difficult on these offensive players to get shots off. Joby Thomas goes to the sideline, one of eight from the field tonight. Nash again at the stripe. Charlotte from the line tonight, five of eight. Notre Dame, 5 of 5. Thomas must keep plenty of fluids in his body. We talked about him being sick this afternoon. He had an IV earlier this afternoon. Here's Chris Thomas, the exciting freshman from Indianapolis, and a rebound by Swanigan inside. Belted, fell, and foul. And that goes on Jermaine Williams in the third tag down him. I like the aggressive thought, though, by Chris Thomas. Trying to get his offensive game going the second half. That will open things up for his teammates. Good rebound by Swanigan. So as the Irish continue to lead 41-37, we'll keep tabs on that game and send you out to Albuquerque, where Gonzaga's lead over Wyoming is 43-38. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner are there. Hey, he got the ball to go down. 
50 to go in the second half of play. Gonzaga with a 43-40 lead. And Sanwu Amadi has six points this half, and Wyoming refusing to go away. Inside, Violet, no, loose tap. Davis with the rebound, he's fouled. Gonzaga just looks to be in a little bit of a hurry. And Dan Dickow is starting to heat up here in the second half of play. Now has 14 points, the lead is three. So Gonzaga leads it by, 40, by 43 to 40, a three-point lead. We remind you, our second wave of games coming your way this evening. Winthrop and Duke in the south. UC Santa Barbara plays Arizona in the west. In the Midwest, Stanford takes on Western Kentucky. And in the south, Utah will face fifth seed Indiana. We thank you for joining us here in New York on Singular at the Half. We'll send you back to Sacramento for the second half of your game right after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Down the lane, and a Charlotte foul. But again, Big Ryan, his, the key to his success is he sprints down the floor, establishes that low post position. Cam Stevens worked him up a little bit, so he wasn't that deep. Picks up his second personal foul. But once Humphreys gets it and turns a corner, instead of allowing the basket, that make him shoot free throw. So Notre Dame's lead over Charlotte is now 45 to 40. Plenty of time remaining in the second half of that game. One other game to tell you about in Albuquerque. Gonzaga leads Wyoming by a score of 43 to 40. 15 and a half to play in the second half. Watch Wyoming's Dante Richardson pull up for the three and give the Cowboys an early three-point lead. It stayed at three points after Josh Davis gets along the baseline, scores it, and draws the foul. But then Dan Dickow, he scores a lot, but he also can find people. Nice no-look pass here to Corey Violet for the throwdown. Gonz Gonzaga was up, too. And Gonzaga's game is going well, and they hit the three. Kyle Bankhead knocks that one down from long range. And right now, the Bulldogs lead it by three with 15.35 to play in the second half. We remind you, another round of games coming your way this evening. In the south, top seed Duke plays Winthrop. You see Santa Barbara and Arizona are playing in the west. Midwest and western Kentucky will meet Stanford. And in the south, number 12, Utah against number five, Indiana. Thanks for joining us on Singular at the Half. We'll send you back to St. Louis for the second half of Kansas and Holy Cross right after this. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Half now has 11 points in the game, and it's his presence inside that has really helped Wyoming seize control of the tempo in the second half, even though they continue to trail by three. San Wumati with 11 points on five of nine shooting. Gonzaga goes back to the man-to-man. -man. They've spent a lot of time in a zone in this particular game. And the idea of the zone was to cut off the inside, and now that Wyoming's scoring inside, Gonzaga goes back to the man-to-man. -man. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Bailey inside and San Wuamati. Power dribble, stripped and fouled. Violet raking at the ball. And the coaches teach you never rake down, always try to rake up at the basketball. And the problem with Violet, he had to reach all the way across the body of it, San Wuamati, to get at that ball. Somebody's going to go after the ball when the big guy dribbles it. It has to be one of the guards dropping down. So and San Huamati missing the first Wednesday night on, on a new survivor. Don't miss the first 10 minutes when the Castaways' lives will be turned upside down. Then stay tuned for an incredible adventure on the amazing race. It all begins at 8, 7 central Wednesday here on CBS. As in San Huamati gets the second one to go. 43 to 41. Gonzaga, a six versus Wyoming, an 11. And as the Wyoming players told us, Dickow in and out. Violet with the rebound. Jump ball the call, and we will head the other way. And that's Mingo inside. As the Wyoming players told us, a darling has to be replaced <laughs> by a darling, and we are it. 
Well, they're they pretty big. wanted Gonzaga. They're pretty big, athletic-looking guys to be anybody's daughter. So maybe their mom. <laughs> or their girlfriend. Yeah, that's, there you go. You got me there. Exactly. Inside, and Sangu Amadi lost it. Picked up Mingo. Rejected, but goaltending is the call. Count the bucket. And the game now tied at 43. And Sangu Amadi, who has been so effective inside today, loses the ball, but Mingo picks it up. And you're not allowed to stick your hand through the <laughs> net and come up through the rim. That is automatic in terms of a basket interference call. Turi off and, and Sanwu Amadi is injured. I think he's got a cut and he's bleeding. And under the rules, if you are bleeding, you have to come out of the game until the bleeding is stopped. So they'll bring Josh Davis back into the game. Both of those guys having outstanding evenings. And they want to get a big Band-Aid quickly. Now step. Crawls into the front court. Ball knocked away. Richardson almost with the steal. Richardson has done a fabulous job against Dickow today, keeping the ball away from Dickow and then making Dickow work extremely hard to run the ball down. And you know Dickow eventually will get his 20 points, but to make him work as hard as Richardson is making him work is a very, very, very good thing for this Wyoming team. Only 5 of 14, Dickow shooting the ball. With all that pressure, he's had a hard time setting up his teammate. Turry off, foul going across the lane. He will go to the line. And the foul called on Mingo. Keep in mind that in addition to being the leading scorer for Gonzaga, Dickow is also the leading assist guy. And with as much pressure as he's been under, it's hard to find open teammates. So Roni Turioff, the freshman from Martinique, was discovered by the Gonzaga coaching staff in Paris. They, as a matter of fact, traveled all the way over to Paris to watch it play. A couple of other big-time teams were interested early on Georgia, North Carolina. Turioff signing with this Gonzaga squad. Davis spins, steal. And it's taken away by Turioff. That's Dickow getting a hand on the ball. 45-43. Hernandez. Turioff really calling for the ball. Now Violet, a wide open 15-footer, too strong. And a foul inside. Going foul against is Wyoming, Richardson. He's trying to block out Step. Third foul on Dante. And Richardson needs to be careful. He's got to save all his fouls for Dickow. He can't be fouling other guys. So Paris Corner comes back into the game. Corner with a really nice first half. Five points, two of four from the field. Violet checks out of the game. Gord back in, along with Turioff, Fernandez, Dickow in the corner. And a whistle. That's an illegal screen by Zach Gord, and Gord continues to struggle in the ball game. One of the reasons that it's a little bit up and down for Gonzaga in this game is that Gord has simply not played the type of game that Gonzaga has become accustomed to. And you can look into the faces of the Zags and see some concern starting to set in. Not having their way with this Wyoming team. This is the first time that Gonzaga's been in the tournament where they're the favorite. Somebody else is trying to upset them. Davis, beautiful double clutch. Ties it up at 45. This kid really proving that he is a player. Seven points, ten rebounds, two blocks, two steals. Hernandez rolling, kicking, Dickow setting. In and out. Loose ball. Picked up. Turioff can't get the foul. Wyoming has been able to keep the pressure on Gonzaga with their ability to score. And Davis, nice move on the inside. How about this? 12.49 to go in the second half of play. Gonzaga, Wyoming tied up at 45 apiece. And it's been the Wyoming defense that's made the biggest statement thus far. And Wyoming has been also able, in addition to their defensive effort, they've done a nice job getting the ball inside. Gonzaga shooting 29% from the field as Turioff misses a pair. They are a 47% shooting team on the season. Their star limited to 14 points. Dan Dickow 
five of 15. Baseline, Davis has been the man. Loose, knocked out of bounds, will head the other way. Josh Davis, as we take a look at the game summary, Cowboys shooting 52%, Zags 29. And that is the biggest story of the game. Gonzaga simply not able to get the ball to go in the basket, but many of those missed shots have been heavily contested. Dick out spinning, kicking in the corner, step frees himself with the ball fake. It's short, Turi off with the rebound, batted out of bounds by Davis. Steve McClain has to be very pleased with his troops. He talked about playing hard for the last 20 minutes of this game, and boy, have they done that. They're just a little quicker to the ball in this second half. Man-to-man -man for Wyoming. Dick Al, look at corner, closing on him. Step, sets up, short, loose, straight with the rebound and the foul. Gonzaga. 6 of 19 from the three-point line, and that percentage continues to plummet. And Blake Stepp is another guy. We've talked about Zach Gord and his struggles in this game. Blake Stepp has also struggled shooting the ball. One for eight shooting, hasn't made a three. Wyoming with an opportunity to take the lead. We had seven lead changes, four ties in the first half of play. Bailey loses it. Here comes Dickow. Gonzaga with numbers. Dickow behind the back. Hernandez rejected by Davis. Here's Bailey on the break. Josh Davis single handedly leading this Wyoming team. What a game for this young man. Time out, Sags. This is the kid that turned down a scholarship to Gonzaga. Days. Can't get it to drop inside a foul call. That's Coombs gathered in on the offensive rebound and a putback attack. It's a little early, but Blizzard gave me the impression that he was going for the knockout punch right here. A long three, a quick one, but look at the glass once again. He may have gotten away with a little shove yeah, on the interior. He sure did, but things going well. They're earning some respect minute by minute. Coombs, the top big man off the bench for this Wilmington team. And the first free throw is there. Luthenthal will come in, and now Gunther will take a seat. You're right. Bibby right now just mixing and matching until he finds the right combination on the floor. Well, the guys who really have gotten you here, you eventually you have to get them on the floor. And by eventually, I don't mean 10 minutes from now. I mean probably in the next minute or two, he's got to get his scores back. Jerry Wainwright. Very successful program as an assistant coach at Wake Forest. A 34 to 12 run. That was after USC had their largest lead of four. Clancy's been quiet. Strong turnaround jumper from the baseline. It gives them the opportunity to come up and extend. Let's see if they can get something out of the trap. Watch out. Almost. As Terrell hit the deck. A couple of seconds to get it over. They do. Blizzard gets it across to Burnett. Foul call. Granville went for the steal. Watch the catch. Sam Clancy's going to roll to the baseline side, space just a little bit. Coombs right there, though. Look where Sam Clancy is, though, and he falls back about 18 feet. So, from the Seahawks' perspective, if he makes that shot, okay, it's a tough one. This is a legal pass right there, too. Second foul on Granville. And the third team foul on USC. 48 to 32. <laughs> Rejected by Clancy. Oh, man, does that ever a mean block? Second block of the night for the All-American. It's like one of my shots from the old days, Ian. You go up, you got to remember who's behind you. Wow. And, Jimmy, we have video. Let's roll that in. <laughs> Hair off a of pump fake. You brought it with you, huh? <laughs> Just about four minutes going by. Second half. Hair. They're not missing. Knocking them down left and right here. Very, very confident bunch of Seahawks that have made a long trip. Blutenthal in a crowd, and he draws the foul. The seniors trying to take over here. Clancy, Blutenthal, and Granville. And the patience, though. Stuart Hare, look at the rotation on this basketball. 
just barely grazing the rim as it passes through. Oh, what, a, what a show they're putting on at the offensive end. This is a 13 seed that currently owns a 19 point lead. Bluthenthal. First one is good. Joel Justice will come in to replace Tim Burnett. And Justice did a nice job off the bench in that first half. Another free throw for Bluthenthal. 86% on the season. Product of Los Angeles. And a timeout. Jerry Wainwright. His team might be living a dream here. Second half. The buzzer rings on the shot clock. Kansas fans trying to spur on their beloved Jayhawks across the way. Boshi to Gooden. And a whistle as Collison had the rebound, and it goes against Kansas. Collison, a little too physical in getting position. His third. There's a definitive hard move by Drew Gooden. You got to see more of that from him. And of course, Drew Gooden doesn't necessarily always have to have this ball in his hands to be an effective scorer. He can play so well without it in the sense that he's an outstanding offensive rebounder. Jave Mead, who played high school ball at Christ the King with Omar Cook, who was a sensational freshman at St. John's last year. Mead was the unknown factor, the pay playmaker. Inside it goes to work. And Worley, who had eight in the first half, has his first of the second half. Back to a five-point advantage, Holy Cross. Well, this size throughout this game of Wurti and Lufkin at times, and uh, Zatko, have uh, bothered Kansas. And another turnover. Oh, trouble times for Kansas. 15.46 left in the second half. Davis kicks it out corner from downtown. No. And Bankhead with the rebound. Dickow the other way. Corner really in his hip pocket. Gonzaga has missed 16 of its 19 second half shots. Turioff, you want him to shoot that one. Hernandez as well. Now Gord. Struggle. And a steal. Corner. Ripping it off down the lane. Zach Gord has had a nightmarish game for Gonzaga. Two of six shooting, now five turnovers for Zach Gord, and Gonzaga is really back on its heels at the moment. Gonzaga complaining about being a six. They thought they should have been higher. For the first time, they are the hunted Dickow. Continues his struggle. Davis tipping it out of bounds. Gonzaga really not executing very well on offense. A very lazy pass by Gord and Corner trying to keep the ball away from Dickow. Just steps in front and heads down the court for the easy one. 49 to 45. Violet sneaking in. Oh! Not enough to English. And Violet will go to the line. The foul called on Davis. Everything has been a struggle offensively for Gonzaga today. So Corey Violet had a tweak in his neck. Didn't practice yesterday. Solid outing. 9.7 rebounds. Gets the first one this Monday. CBS presents the birth of a new comedy. When Baby Bob opens his mouth, you won't believe what you'll hear. Catch the premiere of Baby Bob Monday after the King of Queens here on CBS. Violet, only three of 11 shooting from the field. Second free throw in and out. Davis with his 11th rebound of the game. 11 rebounds, seven points, three blocks, two steals for the young man from Salem, Oregon. This is amazing. Gonzaga has forced 12 turnovers. They have 16 offensive rebounds, and yet they trail in the game. Bailey squares up. A long rebound to Step. And Step is another guy that Gonzaga would really like to see get off the mark shooting. Down the lane. Short arms. It tipped up and in by a left. Even when they get a layup, it's hard. 
A one point game in front of this sellout crowd. Close to 16,000 at the pit. Inside, knocked away by Alette. And here comes Step. In and out dribble. In the corner, lets it go. Violet the rebound, and step back. And Violet has started to assert his presence on the inside. The and second chance points really keeping Gonzaga in the game. Violet has scored five in a row for Gonzaga. And the Zags reclaim the lead by one. Inside. Here's straight. Hangs. No. Loose step with the rebound. And step fouled up top by Bailey. Too much penetration. Second foul called on Marcus Bailey. And that is team foul number six against Wyoming. Dickow inbounding on the baseline. And Gonzaga, a very good free throw shooting team. So if you're the Cowboys, you want to limit those foul opportunities. You don't want to give the Zags a chance from the line. They shoot 73% collectively. Dickow great catch. turns, lets it go. In and out. That one halfway down. Bankhead with the offensive rebound. Now Gord, the power dribble cleaned by Insan Wuamadi. Straight the other way. Man to man for Gonzaga. Keep in mind, Wyoming not a good perimeter shooting team. Bailey and an offensive foul. Josh Davis will be called for the illegal pick. So with 7.46 to go, he picks up his third. Gonzaga with the 50 to 49 lead. And, and that's that is the seventh team foul against Wyoming. So Gonzaga, just what we were talking about, they will get the opportunity to go to the line. They have really struggled shooting the ball. Steve McLean has to be pleased with the way his team has played defense, but there really isn't much defense against the team shooting free throws and step a very good free throw shooter. So at the 746 mark, Wyoming over the limit, and Gonzaga will shoot one and one from here on out until the tenth team foul. Step gets it to go. He's one of ten from the field. But he is nearly an 80% free throw shooter. Blake Step from Eugene. Second one, good. Now we'll take a timeout. 7.46 to go. 52-49. Zags. And Drew Gooden cuts the lead to one. Ten points for him. Kansas fans on their feet. And Ballard in there now trying to take the Heimer goal of at least putting pressure on the backboard. But Jave Mead slips inside for the scooper. He now has nine. Gooden and the foul to Worley. And the fans are saying, hey, that's what happened at the other end. You didn't blow the whistle. Take a look at this with Tim Zetko actually going straight up. The <laughs> he is entitled to that space, and this is what Drew Gooden does so well, playing off the ball, getting to the offensive board, and then Ballard unable to maintain that pressure on Jave Mead as Mead just wore him down, took him to the basket. All they were looking for was just a couple of minutes of energy from Ballard. Boshi back in. 46-43 Holy Cross. 12 and a half to go. And Gooden making that strong move and fouled before he got there. 
since 95 Kansas seated number one four times the three previous times unable to advance beyond the Sweet 16 and that 97 loss to Arizona particularly painful Roy Williams said to use the word devastated when they were unable to advance with the team that was just loaded with the great stars and the pain continues Dick as this edition of the Kansas Jayhawks has to continually answer questions about what happened in the past pass too tall for Collison another turnover Guillermo Sanchez with the ball the walk on now giving significant minutes to his team Zacco hawked by Gooden needs some help where is it and timeout just before the five second count just under 12 minutes to go Ole cross 46 Kansas 43 some heated action underneath the basket. If you take a look right here, specifically right there, Bluthenthal is going to turn. Burnett's going to come out of the pack. A little push, a little shove, maybe a slight punch. Game goes on. Little action, though. It's starting to pick up a little underneath the basket. Tough to tell, though, if right. Burnett put on the theatrical maneuver or if Bluthenthal actually did something underhanded. Well, with that much traffic also, it's difficult for the perspective of the officials. Having three of them out there, sometimes mm -hmm. you do miss an angle. 58-43, Seahawks leading the Trojans. After the timeout, Williams in some trouble. Better. Justice with three to shoot. Justice puts it on the floor, gets rid of it, and hits. Oh, where did that come from? <laughs> Going right, flicking left. Everything is working right now for UNC Wilmington. Quenville penetration. Oh. And a long oh. take on the inside. Oh. Foul called as Granville took it strong. Offensive foul. This may qualify for the shot of the day for us right here. Going to your right. Pick and poke it back up. And here's Granville coming down the lane. Good job by the defenders. Combs stepping in. Now you just better be, have to be smart with the basketball if you're the Seahawks. Seahawks led this one by nine at the half. They have extended the lead here in the second half. 17 point cushion right now for UNCW. They're not afraid to extend the court. Lizard gets it inside. Coons turning and traveling call. Coming up after your local news, stay tuned for the Emmy Award winning Late Show with David Letterman. Tonight, U.S. Airmen deliver the top 10 cool things about being in the Air Force. Also, Andy Richter as well. CBS Mailbag. It's all coming up tonight on Dave. Trojan's trying to get it to Clancy. Every time he touches it, it looks like a double team. It is Clancy on a turnaround. Coons with a block, but a foul called. And Clancy will earn a trip to the strike with 12.04 to go. That's the in regulation. It's the only way Clancy can avoid the double team if he floats away and floats towards the baseline. If he's thinking of coming back to the middle of the floor, he's going to be surrounded each and every time. The concern of Bibby entering this season with Sam Clancy, he wanted him to play with a mean streak. And Clancy has stepped forward this season, not necessarily tonight. Bibby has said that Clancy just took over games this season. Dominated, flat out dominated games in the Pac-10. Well, Sam Clancy's dad was a pretty good player also at the mm -hmm. University of Pittsburgh and quite a rebounder. Remember one night he came down to Duke University and oh, got about 22 <laughs> boards. <laughs> Clancy just missed on a pair. His dad, of course, made a name for himself in the NFL on the defensive line. And now the defensive line coach for the New Orleans Saints. Hair, hesitation. And rebounded by Farmer. It's a big time in this basketball game for USC right now to get about three minutes of solid play. Farmer's had the hot hand. Can't stroke it though from long range, and it's saved out on the baseline by Hare. Here's a run out. Williams met by Luthenthal. Running one hander, no good, but a foul. Now tracking the basketball, another good release by Blizzard on the right side of the floor. Trojans were running a bunch of guys towards the offensive glass. Look at all the three guys back here. Now there's five in the back. And off they go. Great recognition and delivery. And Williams going to extend. Look at the long arm. Keep it away from the shot blocker and get a shot up. He knew he was going to take a hit. One thing Jerry Wainwright has done with this program, he has transformed them into a defensive team. They have led their conference in team defense eight years in a row. And right now they are holding USC to 43 points. This is a Trojan team that averaged over 77 and a half during the season.
Bulldogs up. They've not shot it well here in the second half, but they have been able to get to the free throw line and convert there, although Dan Dickow missed the second one. So it's a four-point game, and Wyoming's done a nice job on the boards. Both of these teams, outstanding rebounding teams. They've played them even there, and they've shot the ball very well here in the second half. Five and a half to play in that game. The winner to play Arizona, UC Santa Barbara winner, but let's get you back to St. Louis now. Holy then one of underdog Holy Cross 46 45. Um, a little Ryan Saravelli going to try to box out Langford here, unable to do it. Basically winds up undercutting him, going underneath his legs as Langford able to tip that ball in. And a big foul it is because that's number four on Saravelli. He's taken out by Coach Ralph Willard. And back in is Jave Mead after a brief rest. Langford to tie. And the freshman gets Kansas even with 10 minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the second half. Very important now for Holy Cross to keep their composure, keep the same mindset, take care of the basketball, move it, get their good shots, make sure you're back on defense and don't give up anything easy there and continue to do a good job on the board. But a near steal by Aaron Miles. That was close for Holy Cross. Wayne Simeon, big freshman in for Kansas. As you see, seven ties, seven lead changes. Kansas' biggest lead was seven. Tim Zatko, the leading scorer for the Crusaders. Down to ten on the shot clock. Sanchez, tough shot. And it comes out to Gooden. Kansas with a chance for the lead. They have not been in front here in the second half. Miles. Langford and Simeon, three freshmen on the floor for the number one seed Jayhawks. Along with Boshi and the All-America Gooden, he's got the ball. Good pass to Simeon. And Wayne Simeon from Leavenworth, Kansas, has a half dozen. Kansas enjoys a two-point lead. Yeah, they can see that one coming a mile away. Simeon wanting the ball on the block. Good defense there and by Drew Gooden, flashing hard up to that high post area. A little high-low action. They execute it beautifully. Zacco, a little too strong. Battle on the boards, and Zacco gets it back, rips it away, and he's fouled. Oh. Tenaciously fighting on the boards, this uh, Holy Cross team. Take a look at Drew Gooden flashing up to that open area. He draws the attention of the defense, and he just, uh, any way he wants to, can deliver the ball inside to Wayne Simeon. Zetko having a very difficult game. He's their best player, averaging 14 points, seven rebounds a game, doing a good job on the boards, but just two for 14 from the field. And he misses the free throw. The foul was on Gooden, his second. Gooden will be given a breather as Collison returns for Kansas. Oh, another upset. University of North Carolina, Wilmington up by 19 against Southern California. <laughs> Collison as Zatko misses both free throws. Could be critical. Kansas by two. And they throw it away. <laughs> Official dumped into the photographer's row. Roy Williams with both hands up said, please slow it down. I thought he was going to come out and tackle that time. Absolutely no excuse for that pass at that point. And Ralph Willard's concern starting the second half playing but seven men would Kansas wear down his Holy Cross team. They look a little tired now. Pressure continues defensively. Down to nine on the shot clock. Need. Back out to Zatko. And he's fouled as there's just two seconds left on the shot clock. And Collison now has four fouls. A reminder, near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we select a Chevrolet MVP of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. And the junior from Naperville, Illinois, has been begging, Tim Zacko has been begging for this kind of a call on a number of occasions, not necessarily jumping into his defender, but drawing some contact. Kirk Heinrich on crutches with that sprained ankle will not return and 
Of course, if Kansas wins, could be a concern for the Saturday game against either Western Kentucky or Stanford. As Zatko looks for his eighth point and another tie. I'm going to say that he released that shot behind the uh, behind the arc. So a three-point attempt. He jumped in. Yeah. A lot of action going on there. He clearly that time jumped into the defender. Collison out with four fouls, rested by Roy Williams. And Zatko with nine now makes the three free shots, and Holy Cross reclaims the lead. Boshi for three. Oh, sweet Boshi. 11 for him. 51 49, Kansas. As they exchange leads with eight and a half to go. One of the good things for Holy Cross in this second half, when they have turned the ball over or missed a shot, Kansas has been unable to get good runouts. Miles with a foul. That will be a two shot attempt. Now Jeff Bochy buying to be the all time leader in three point shooting makes and takes. Going right down to the wire in this season will always be hanging around that three point line. He's taken 203 point attempts coming into this game made 93. He's three for four today critical to keep the Jayhawks close and now two shots to tie. For Brian Wilson and Wilson a cool customer at the line the best free throw shooter for Holy Cross 81 and a half percent. Mentioned before Jave Mead a teammate of Omar Cook in high school. Brian Wilson was a teammate of Duke's Jason Williams up in Plainfield, New Jersey. How about that uh, backcourt for St. Joe's? Misses the second, so Kansas still leads by one at 51-50. The number one scoring team in the nation, averaging 92, but held in check by this Holy Cross team. Sanchez out on Boshi. Good. And Wordy. Good. Solid move by the All-America, and he's fouled. Yeah, Patrick Wordy forcing him the wrong way, unless he's supposed to send him middle for some help. Drew Gooden just too strong going to that right hand. We've seen him do it a number of times tonight and be able to finish. Nobody stepping in to help out. As Drew Gooden just taking the little bump and strong enough to finish. And that'll take uh, Wordy out of the game for Holy Cross with his fourth foul. 13 point for Drew Gooden. He completes the three point play. And number one Kansas here in the Midwest now leads by four. A push in the back. Corey picking ninth team foul against the Zags. And Zaga with their great season has really not been involved in that many close games. The last time they played in this building and they did play here this year, they won a 95 to 90 victory against New Mexico in overtime. Davis continues to star tonight with eight points now to go along with 13 rebounds. Second one up. And he gets the shooter's roll. A one-point Gonzaga lead. So let's see. 322 to go. Can Gonzaga play with the pressure? They've never had it before. Dick out. Defensively for Wyoming, you want somebody besides Dick out to shoot the ball. Who wants it? Violet. He's had a strong second half. Dick out with 10 to shoot. Richardson gives him some space. Pulls up from downtown. Way short. Long rebound. Tracked down by Richardson. Into the front court. He's fouled and will go to the line. And Dante Richardson is an 89% free throw shooter. So that worked out very well for Steve McLean in Wyoming. Very interesting. The guys on the Gonzaga Bulldog team don't seem to want the ball except for Dickow. Richardson, a junior from Colorado Springs, 88%, gets the first one. Money. And we are tied at 60 apiece. 
and now it really gets interesting. The pressure of March. Wyoming takes the lead. Ten lead changes, six ties. Here comes Gonzaga. Down by one, timeout, Zags. 2.45 to go. Albuquerque, March Madness on C. Another. Here's the delivery, here's the shot. Whoa. Third block of the night for Sam Clancy. Look at that reaction. Wow, big time plays. Well, they hold on to the ball. Callahan, short. And here comes Creighton. Is this going to be the couple of minute blitz that the Trojans will throw at them? Former swing. Two-handed swim. Now it's Jerry Wainwright thinking about a timeout, I'm sure. Settle into the half court situation. No time. Has been Dick out. Gord along with Steph, Dick out, Bankhead, Violet. Step changing his shot. It's a brick tap picked up by Richardson. And he wisely brings it out and finds his point guard. Step has really struggled. He's now one for 13. He went in there looking for the foul, didn't get it, and now a huge defensive series for Gonzaga. Here's the freshman from Chicago with the step down the lane, draws the foul. Jason Strait with feline quickness gets right by Dickow and heads to the line to shoot two. And that's another reason for that zone defense that Gonzaga has played much of the game. They're a little bit afraid of that perimeter quickness. And Violet is fouled out of the game. He leaves with 14 points and 10 rebounds. And they will bring Turioff back in. Violet had nine points at the end of the first half of play, finished with 14, with 2.17 to go here in the second half. He's a much better offensive player than Turioff. And Turioff is, he has played a valuable role for Gonzaga, but rarely in a role like this. Straight, 71% shooter, perfect on the first. His first free throw attempt of the evening. throws for Jason Strait gives Wyoming a 63-60 lead over sixth-seeded Gonzaga. Now there's a lot of time left in this game, but you just get the idea that this is an almost must-score situation for Gonzaga. Aside from Dickow, everybody else tentative right now shooting the ball for the Zags. Here's Dickow on the high screen, draws a double team. Now Dickow down the baseline, the runner no. The rebound goes to Nsanwu Amadi. And the Cowboys can feel it. They talked about stepping up to the challenge, wanting to face the Zags, who have complained about not being seated as high as they should be. Now with Gonzaga in the man-to-man, -man, Wyoming sort of spread things out to allow their guards to penetrate. Nine seconds to shoot. Bailey, the fadeaway! Off the back rim, Bankhead with the rebound. Gonzaga down by three. Dick out down the lane. Draws the foul on the floor. He will go to the line. March Madness at its best, folks. 115 remaining. Wyoming, three points in front of Gonzaga, but the AP first team All-America is ready to head to the line to shoot to Dan Dickow has struggled mightily 6 of 21 from the field 4 of 13 from the three point line 22 points on the evening and one of the reasons that he has struggled so much today is Dante Richardson who has just fouled out of the game Richardson fouling out with 10 points four rebounds three assists and that doesn't begin to talk about the contribution Richardson has made to Wyoming today Dick out getting the first, but the Wyoming defense has been nothing short of amazing. Gonzaga on the season, a 47% shooting team, 
Tonight, they're shooting 25%, 17 of 66. Dickow's free throws keeping them in it. 1.14 to go, 63-62. Three-quarter court trap. And Sanbu Amati misses the layup, but Davis crashes and jams. Dickow the other way down the lane, and Davis rejects it. What a game for the young man from Salem. 11 points, 14 rebounds, four block shots. Having the game of his life. Unbelievable. Dickow has a clear lane to the basket, but Davis never gives up. That is a great job to keep his body away from Dickow and get the block. Wyoming, 56 seconds away from pulling off the biggest upset of the tournament on the first day. CBS Sports Line stat of the game, points in the paint, and Kansas a plus 14. That figured as the Jayhawks have opened up a five-point lead. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sports Line. Get the feeling the Holy Cross Crusaders may be saying to themselves the last couple of minutes, what am I doing here? Steve McLean's team, as you take a look at the reset, four timeouts remaining for Wyoming, one for Gonzaga. As Bailey heads to the line, Steve McLean's team said that they were not afraid of Gonzaga, the sixth-ranked team in the country. They said a darling has to be replaced by a darling, and we feel that we're the team this season as Bailey gets the first one to go. 66-62. Time starting to work against the Zags. The Cinderella's of the tournament the last three years. The second one pure. Full court pressure. Bankhead to Dickow. On the move. Dickow, the hesitation to the basket and the layup. They refuse to quit. 50 seconds to go. Now, if you're going to foul in this situation, you want to foul right away. Gonzaga obviously electing to play tough defense. A one possession game and a timeout, a full timeout has been called by Wyoming. 35 seconds away from the second round. For a big basket here. Wilson. And that'll be a goal 10 on Simeon. Count the basket for Brian Wilson. He has 13. There's Wayne Simeon going up, ball on the way down. Easy call for the officials, just a tad too late for Simeon. He had the call all the way, no question. Easy. Good and nice pass to Simeon. And uh, what's the call, foul or a held ball? I think it's a foul, and if it is, Brian Wilson has just been disqualified.